Now that we've gone through and developed a number of Laplace transform pairs to show how we transform from the time domain into the Laplace domain, and also demonstrated how the Laplace transform affects the um, a, a certain mathematical operations, let's just demonstrate how we're going to be using the Laplace transforms to analyze circuits. And to do so, let's take a look at this simple parallel RLC circuit. You'll recognize this as a step response type circuit because prior to the switch moving, the switch was closed shorting both the current source out of the circuit and also draining any energy that might have been stored in the capacitor and the inductor. So initially there would be no energy in here. And at t equals zero, we suddenly apply this DC current to the rest of the circuit. To analyze this, we're going to use, or we're going to now show how we can use um, Laplace transforms to analyze this circuit, which we have done in the past using more classical differential equations techniques. You remember the underdamped, overdamped, critically damped aspects of this type of a circuit. So to start out, we're going to do just as we did when we were doing the classical differential equations approach by writing the node equation at this upper node. And when we do that, we have the current associated with the capacitor in terms of V of T. The current coming through the capacitor out of that node is C dV dT. The current coming down here through the inductor would be added to it 1 over L times the integral from 0 to T. Um, let's, uh, well, V of X dx, let's be explicit here that these are all, these V functions that we're talking about are functions of T. In this expression here, we're just using the dummy integral, the dummy variable X dx because we have the variable T as one of the limits in the integration. We've seen that before. Plus, now the current leaving the uh, node going through the resistor here is just going to be V of T divided by R. The sum of all of those things is must equal than the current coming in, which is I dC. And the way we're going to represent this switching event is we're going to multiply this constant dC by U of T. That then is bringing in this idea that it's not constant. It wasn't IDC before the switch opened, it was zero before the switch was opened. The current coming into this was zero before the switch opened. So we now have a differential integral equation. There's the derivative operator, the integration operator, there's some scaling terms going in, we're summing them up, it's effectively a superposition of these three terms. So let's go ahead and use the techniques that we've developed up to this point to transform this entire differential equation into the Laplace domain. Now we know that when we take the Laplace transform of the derivative, we have, of course, starting out here with C, times the Laplace transform of the derivative, you'll recall, was S times the Laplace transform of the function itself. Well, the Laplace transform of V of T is V of S. And then we had to strike, subtract off the initial value V of 0 minus. Now, the Laplace plus the Laplace transform of the integral is 1 over S. I've got a 1 over L there, so it'll be a 1 over S times 1 over L, or 1 over LS times V of S. In other words, the Laplace transform of the integral of some function is just 1 over S times the Laplace transform of the function itself. And we have then finally plus the Laplace transform of V of T is just V of S times or multiplied by 1 over R or divided by R. On this side then, we have IDC, which is the constant or a scaling value, IDC, and Laplace transform of U of T is 1 over S. So what we have here then is a algebraic expression in terms of this function of S, V of S. We've got S, V of S here. We have 1 over LS times V of S. And we have 1 over R times V of S. 
So let's combine like terms, factor out the V of S. V of S, and when we do that, we are left with C times S. Now let's also note, as we mentioned before, that the initial voltage on here would have been zero because of the short circuit. This is the voltage right before the switching occurred. Right before the switching occurred, the switch was closed. It was shorting this entire node out, and so let's just point out that that voltage there would be zero and leave it out. So we have V of S times C times S plus, I'm going to pull this term on over here first of all, 1 over R and then plus 1 over LS. Those are all the terms that are being multiplied or that are multiplying V of S. And then on the other side, we have IDC divided by S. Now we want to solve for V of S, the Laplace transform of the voltage here. And to do that, we're going to get it into the standard form, first of all, by multiplying both sides of the equation by S over C. The reason we're going to do that is we want to get in this polynomial term right here, we want to have the highest power of S with a coefficient of 1 in front of it. We, I'm going to multiply by S because I've got an S here in the denominator that I'm going to want to clear. So multiplying both sides of this thing by S over C gives us then V of S times S over C times this gives us S squared, the C's cancel, plus 1 over R times C times S. Again, this times that term is that. Plus, multiplying this by S over C, the S's cancel, and we're left with 1 over LC is equal to IDC over C. You'll notice that this term right here is just the term from the characteristic equation back when we were talking about the, the uh, more traditional form of solving the differential equation. Let's go ahead and now solve for V of S by dividing both sides by this term. And it gives us IDC divided by C over S squared plus 1 over RCS plus 1 over LC. All righty, that's what we're looking for. This, then, is the voltage across this node, or this node voltage, in the Laplace domain. Or this is the Laplace transform of this V of T. Note a couple of things. First of all, V of S is a rational polynomial in S. That means that the numerator and the denominator are both polynomials in S. We started out up here with derivatives, integrals. We've said one of the reasons we do the Laplace transform is that in the frequency domain we replace derivatives and integrals with college algebra types expressions in terms of a function or a variable S, which is um, this complex Laplace variable. Second thing we observe. This is in the S domain. Our next step needs to be, how do we get it back into the time domain? To do that, we need to develop a technique for inverse transforming this function here back into the time domain. To do that, we're going to introduce a technique that involves partial fraction expansion of this expression.